Welcome to our joint presentation, a conceptual framework for empathy and its application to investigate non-human animals. Empathy is often characterized as the glue that keeps societies together. We want to investigate and offer an adequate account of empathy since it is so important. Let us start with an everyday example. Tom is the neighbor of an old lady who likes homemade food, but is not able to cook anymore. She is sad about not having her favorite homemade food anymore. Tom knows that and wishes to make her happy. Thus, one day he cooks her favorite food and hands it over. This example has three core features, which we take to be criteria of adequacy for a very typical case of empathy. He registers her affective state of being sad, as well as her situation, being handicapped, and the mindset of still desiring her homemade food. And second, Tom has an attitude to care for the lady and help her. And third, he is developing a specific behavioral response directed at her, namely cooking her favorite meal. So we think that the registration, the caring attitude and a specific behavioral response directed at the registration is very characteristic and these are three criteria of adequacy for typical case of empathy. Now, before developing our own account, we want to highlight the deficits of two important conceptual frameworks offered in the literature. The first is the Russian doll model of empathy. It is arguing that there are certain cognitive abilities which unfold one on top of the other presupposing a sequential unfolding. This involves perception action mechanism, on top of that emotional contagion and motor mimicry, which takes as an additional ability, sympathetic concern and consolation. And on top of all of those, perspective taking and targeted helping is added. Now, this framework of a systematic unfolding of one ability on top of the other is not empirically adequate. Psychopathy is here an important counterexample. We observe typically a lack of sympathetic concern on the one hand, so the third level is not implemented, while we also can describe adequate, um, typically uh, expertise in perspective taking and in principle also in targeted helping. So the highest level is implemented while the third level is lacking. This is um, indicating that we should give up the strong understanding of the Russian doll model of empathy. Furthermore, sympathetic concern is an attitude, perspective taking is a specific cognitive ability. And if we want to distinguish those, we should also make a different conceptual framework um, and develop that. The second option is the combination model, which argues that we can characterize empathy as implementing one of three typical dimensions, and we either matching with others, understanding of others, or prosociality. There may be combinations leading to complex cases of empathy, but the implication of this model is that any realization of one factor is a true case of empathy. And this is where our criticism is based on. We think that prosociality is not a good case of empathy per se. Why not? If we look at behavior that is beneficial to others, then this behavior need not involve the registration of the other's affective state. It also need be, not be based on the attitude of caring. A prosocial behavior can just be motivated by conventions or by just doing it for fun. Um, so it need not be directed towards an affective state of the other and it need not be motivated by an attitude of caring for the other. So pro-social behavior per se without additional features is not empathic. So we need a different approach that still is motivated um, and taking over the idea that there are different abilities that we should account for. But we think that we, starting with our typical example, we should our, take our criteria of adequacy 
to be at the core of characterizing different facets of empathy. So this criteria of adequacy involve the registration of the other's affective state, the situation, and ideally also the mindset. It involves the attitude of caring and a specific behavioral response directed towards both of the dimensions of the registration and the attitude. So let us explicate that by developing our own methodological framework. And to do that, we benefit from a theoretical framework offered by Hoffman for developmental stages of empathy. And we develop those in more detail using our own explication of the different stages and then show that, they can, that this can be nicely applied also to non-human animals. Let us start with the first stage. So what we offer is a multi-component model of empathy, starting with the very basic form of emotional contagion. Laughing if someone else is laughing, being sad when someone else is sad, involves the registration of the other's affective state. What is not involved is an attitude of caring, but we have a typical response directed at the registration of the other state. So we have two components, the registration and the response behavior, but um, it is a very basic form of empathy because this response behavior remains automatic. It's just effective matching. We find this in the table in the first column. So the registration of the effective state is clearly there. The attitude is lacking, but the behavioral response directed towards the other is implemented despite being automatic. This emotional contagion is also implemented in a variety of other species, including rodents, canids, and care parrots. Now the next stages will be presented by Maya Cream. Now I would like to introduce the second form of our multi-component model of empathy. This is called egocentric empathy. An example is seeking comfort with the caregiver as a reaction to perceiving someone else in distress. The subject now registers the affective state and also the situation of the other, but it still lacks an attitude to care for the other. So the response, although it is now more flexible than it was in emotional contagion, remains self-oriented, as is shown by aversive behavior and so-called as if it was me behavior. In our multi-component model in the second column now, you can see the case of egocentric empathy. It implements the registering of the affective state and also the registering of the situation of the other, but the care for others is still lacking. So this leads to self-directed response. An evidence for such a pattern of the registration of the common specific affective state and situation followed by an aversive reaction has been shown for apes and also for rodents. The developing self-other distinction can be realized, for example, in the ability of joint attention, and this ability has been shown for apes as well as some other species. The fourth, third form we call intermediate empathy. Examples are true other directed consolation behaviors and directed helping. Intermediate empathy involves the registration of affective state and also of the situation of the other, and that now combined with an attitude to care for the other leads to a flexible other directed response, such as comforting or helping. As you can see here, intermediate empathy can be found in the third column of the table, and it involves the registration of the affective state and the registration of the situation of the other, but it is different from egocentric empathy since it now involves an attitude of caring for the other, which then leads to an other directed instead of a self-directed response. There is convincing evidence that at least some species help conspecifics without even receiving a reward or instead of receiving a reward. For example, rats free captured cage mates and even share their food with them afterwards. Similar helping behaviors have been shown for primate species. And there is also evidence for consolation behavior in a broad variety of species. But the problem with consolation is that it could also be self-directed to comfort oneself instead of comforting another. And this is still under discussion how this is related to empathy or not. Then we come to the fourth form, what we call full-blown empathy. A complex example 
is our case of Tom and the old lady, as was described before. It involves the registration of the effective state of being sad, the situation of not being able to cook anymore, and the mindset of still desiring the homemade food. Together with that and Tom's attitude to care for the old lady, that leads to a flexible other directed response that involves the other's mental states, such as beliefs and desires. In this case, this is serving her her favorite food. It can be shown also by other active helping behaviors and specific comforting behavior. To return to our table, in the last column, you can see full-blown empathy. And the main difference to intermediate empathy now is the involvement of the registration of the other's mindset. This includes the beliefs and desires of the other that are usually different from one's own. So the central new feature of registering the other's mindset presupposes the ability of cognitive perspective taking. And this ability is usually tested by the false belief task. The anticipatory looking paradigm is passed by apes, but the problem with this test, it is an implicit version of the false belief task, is that it is still under debate whether succeeding in this test really shows cognitive perspective taking or not. But apes can also pass the active helping paradigm of the false belief task. And there they have to show a helping behavior that presupposes that the apes are sensitive to the conspecifics being misinformed at least. So together, this indicates that they show a helping behavior that includes being sensitive to the other's mindset and also an attitude for caring. But of course, to give a final remark on this, further evidence and further research into this field is still required. So, Taken together, in our approach to empathy, we now first propose three criteria of adequacy, namely the registration of the effective state of the situation and also of the mindset of the other, the attitude to care for others, and the behavioral response, which can have a relevant self-other distinction, it can be self-directed or other-directed, but in all cases, it has to relate closely to the attitude and the registration stages. These criteria we combined with four stages that are suggested by developmental research to form our multi-component model of empathy. With these three components and the subdivisions, we can nicely distinguish four main types of empathy that we explicated earlier. But why are the named four types considered as cases of empathy in the first case? That is because our model is to be understood in a Wittgensteinian sense of family resemblance. This means that we have the possibility to include also intermediate forms of empathy that only partly fit into the framed categories. But we have these three criteria of adequacy, namely registration, attitude, and the related behavioral response. If at least two of these criteria are fulfilled, we can speak of a case of empathy. Emotional contagion is one of these cases, since it involves the registration of the effective state of the other, as well as a related behavioral response. But it lacks the third part, namely the attitude of caring. Cases which meet only one of the three criteria might be considered as borderline cases and not as true cases of empathy. So to, together, this model can not only help to understand empathic phenomena in humans, but can fruitfully be applied also to non-human animals and thus enriches comparative research in the field of empathy. So thank you for your attention, and we are now looking forward to your questions.